women have always been a part of sport. We've always played sport. There's mothers that watch the game. There's daughters that watch the game. There's aunties and sisters that watch the game. And we're a huge part of football and, and sport, as I've mentioned. And I think, you know, to be able to play at the highest level and, and to be told that, hey, like when you get to a certain age, you don't have to stop. You can go all the way. Um, I think we've been a part of a huge movement and AFLW, I feel like, has, has really led the way. Hey, hey, welcome to the Bodies Built Better podcast. I'm your host, Jackie Tan, and I'm so thankful you are here with me today. This show is all about human performance. So if you want to be showing up every day as your best self and perform at your best, then this show is for you. I chat with athletes, experts, coaches, and authors on all the best tips, tools, and strategies to help you achieve your best. We explore the body's incredible ability to heal, adapt, and evolve so you can crush limitations, reconnect your body and mind, and discover your extraordinary potential. And today on the show, I chat with AFLW player and Port Adelaide player, Gemma Houghton picked up by Fremantle Football Club in the inaugural season of the AFLW back in 2017. Gemma has had an incredible career so far, earning the status of one of the best forwards in the competition. But it hasn't been without its challenges. At the end of the 2018 season, she was not offered another contract, which forced her to rethink her future. Realising that footy is the dream, she turned it all around. Having played most of her career with Fremantle in May 2022, this year she signed with Port Adelaide and will go down in the history books kicking the club's first ever goal. I was lucky enough to spend some time chatting with her about her journey from basketball to football, how she has managed injuries in the past and how that's evolved, her history-making goal, the incredible work she does out in the community and her vision for her future. She is an incredible woman making great impact, not only on the Oval, but out in the community and young people's lives. Enjoy this incredible episode with an incredible woman, Gemma Houghton. Gemma, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Welcome to the Bodies Built Better podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. Such a pleasure to have you. You are one of the best forwards in the competition at the moment. You've just come back from injury. How is it getting back out in the park with the girls? Yeah, um, it's it's been a bit weird to be honest because the injury happened in round two um, and obviously with such a short season, um, you know, we're, we're already, I'm back but there's only two games left. Yeah. So. Um, but it's been amazing to to just get back out there. And my intention was always after the injury, um, I was going to do everything I could mentally, um, physically, and and do everything right to get back out there with them. Um, because you know, I obviously miss being out there with them and wanted to um, do yeah, like I said, do everything to get back. So I'm I'm glad I made it, and it's probably a short turnaround, probably a really quick turnaround in terms of surgery. Um, but I really do think it was my mind and positivity the whole way that got me back out. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I know you were injured really quite badly. Was it 2018? Yeah, yeah. And um, that quite <laughs> goes as the way you wanted it to. What, what, what's the difference between back then and, and your approach now? Because that back then that almost ended your career, right? Uh, none, uh, in a way, so that um, I had a stress fracture mm. and I was very young at the time and even young in terms of not my age, but I guess the understanding of injuries, um, what they can do, you know, to an athlete and, and that life when you're isolated in the injury mm. rehab group. So um, there was a lot that I didn't understand and one of them probably would have been nutrition. Um, so I didn't eat the best foods and when you're not eating the best foods and you can't run, um, you know, there's only sort of one, one way about it, whereas you're not fit, you, you know, you gain weight, all that sort of stuff. So I guess the injury itself wasn't career ending, but it put me in a position where I was 
in an exit meeting with the coaches at Fremantle um, and basically they said, look, you're an AFLW player, but when you're fit, right now you're not fit, so we're not offering you a contract. So potentially, yeah, I was at a crossroad where, you know, I had to decide my future and what I wanted to do. And so, um, yeah, it was, I think from then to, to now, um, you know, this this is my seventh year in the competition and in a professional environment. So I've been able to work out and learn from other athletes um, around me and um, not just in AFLW, but, you know, you sort of reach out and you listen to podcasts and you watch um, documentaries on athletes and they all have the similar sort of turnarounds with injuries, the setbacks and, and the hurdles that you overcome and you can align it with with you and your journey. Yeah, absolutely. And was there any, I guess you've mentioned podcasts or docos, was there any that stood out to you that really you think about now as well when you when you look back at that? that yeah, you? I think, yeah, there's, um, there's a, uh, they call him um, Eric the Prophet and he, he talks about, he's all about um, motivational speaking. Um, he's not necessarily podcast, but um, he does like speak like speeches. And so um, there's one that I love. It probably goes, they're, they're not very long. Some are very, or some are and some aren't, but his one was um, my favorite one with him was called Lion in the Jungle. Um, and it just talks about, um, yeah, a, a lion in the jungle and how um, it survives and what it does. And I sort of just, in a way, would listen to it every day and it, just I don't know it hypes you up in a way like where you just you feel motivated and so that for me um in terms of like listening to it every day and and I would vision like vision myself coming back and and like you know in a way as a lion and um defeating all the stuff that was coming up against me with injury and I guess not just proving others wrong but um proving to myself that I I can you know get through whatever I'm going through and come out stronger on the other side yeah, absolutely. I love that. I'll have to check that one out. I think it's yeah. so important that everyone has that something that they can um, refer back to as, as a resource. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's go back for a moment. At the beginning of your career, you were picked up by Fremantle in the inaugural season of 2017. What was your journey up until that point? Because you didn't start as a footballer. Yeah. Um, so at the time I was playing basketball, um, I was in the SBL, which I think now they've changed it to NBL one. Um, and yeah, I was, I was 22. So I was probably at an age as well where I was ready to, I guess, if I really wanted to focus on basketball, um, I could have gone up another level and, and potentially there were pathways that were in front of me to, you know, train and and possibly play um NBL and you know I always had dreams it was it was interesting actually because for me before basketball I was a runner and my identity was always um through running or basketball and that that was what I wanted and then out of nowhere I've had this plan of you know one day playing basketball for Australia and then you know all of a sudden my brother's just gone hey like Ebony Antonio who's my best friend um said would you be interested in playing footy and it never really crossed my mind I had played growing up with my brother and we played in the park with the neighborhood kids but um I never actually dreamt of being an AFL player um so it was weird but like I thought you know what I really want to challenge myself I was probably at a time as well where I was putting a lot of work with basketball and not necessarily reaping the rewards that I thought I should have been at the time. So I was open to a challenge and a new adventure. And yeah, I went down to a talent search and um, I was very fit at the time. So I caught their attention with the beat test and um, the agility test, the vertical jump and the 2K time trial. My footy skills, let's just say they (laughs) they weren't anywhere near what they are. They would have come. (laughs) (laughs) They would have come. But um, I I, I guess at the time I had the natural athleticism and ability to to play sport so um that got me through the door <laughs> how long did did you feel it took to really get used to the skill side of, of footy yeah I reckon it was interesting because I feel like the first year and the season was a lot shorter than I think there was only seven games in the first year so 
it went really fast and I probably just felt like, um, I mean, I, I grew up religiously watching footy, so I knew the game and I knew what you could and couldn't do. But um, when you're out there playing, it's a little bit different. So the first year sort of just went by and I was going through the motions of, of just playing. Then the second year I sat out a lot of it through the injury, uh, my first injury. And it wasn't until my third year that really opened up in 2019. Um, but previous to that, I played a season at um, Swan Districts in the Waffle. And that's probably where I really started to have confidence in in the game, back my ability in certain areas and understand um, what areas I was really good at and, and focus on that. And then through that work on the little things like my kicking, which my kick from the first year to now has definitely improved. <laughs> but it, it's something that, you know, I always say whatever you put into something, you get out. So yeah. I put a lot of effort and time and into kicking and had a lot of people around me giving me tips on kicking. But at the end of the day, I had to work out what felt right for me. And then I had my own little style of kicking. And, um, yeah, it's, it's all event, eventuated out to, you know, I guess confidence in the game now. Speaking of style of kicking, I've heard a little story of you lining <laughs> up for goal. <laughs> thrown up the ball really high so you could just fix your hair for a moment. Oh. <laughs> is this wow. something that happens a lot? It does. It does. And it's for no other reason other than I probably don't have tight hair ties. Yeah. And I get knocked around a bit, so I've got to just retighten it to make True. sure it's sitting nice. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I've also, I mean, speaking of... um. You mentioned ebony and and basketball. Is the is the debate still on who's the better basketballer? Oh, it is. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely on. But I will add, um, it's probably not between Epps and I. It's actually between um, Juddy, yeah. Cara. Um, she she did beat me in um, time zone basketball, and so right. now she is. Uh, telling Epps and I that she's the better bowler. Out of yeah, Oklahoma. holds bragging rights. <laughs> she does hold bragging rights, but I'll be back in Perth in a few weeks and I'm ready for a rematch. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Keep us up to date with that. Yeah. What's it like to me? I know you said you, you're best mates with Ebony, but what's it like to go into a team and meet people for the first time and then try and structure a game who, you know, like yourself who are playing footy potentially for the first time as a team what what is that like yeah it's um it's a bit different I, I've been fortunate enough and I guess the team as well where um we do have a number of players that have been in the comp previously so I've come up against um obviously Ange Foley Aaron Phillips Justine um Mules at, at um, Adelaide Crows and then and also the Gold Coast players um Ebony Day at, at, from Collingwood, so you do know of certain players, and um, and it's set, sort of now all coming together. And um, I can tell you right now, I'd rather have all those girls on on my side, <laughs> on your than, side. and versing them. <laughs> um, but we do also have a very um, young team in a sense of first year players. Mm. So I think to date there was fourteen or fifteen um, debuts this year in in our season. And if you think about that, you know, it it has obviously taken time to build that connection and understand the way that we all play individually. Mm. Um, I think it's it's definitely improved, you know, each game and the girls have done an amazing job in their first year. And, um, you know, I think about my first year at Frio and Port Adelaide have had a very long time to focus on us coming into the competition. And I really think they've done such an amazing job in, one, getting together the team, two, building that connection over that period of a, a really short pre-season and then staying together this whole time through the ups and downs of getting through it. So um, there is a, a short, doc, or not short, but a half an hour documentary called The Inaugurals Out on our first year. Um, it's an incredible, incredible piece and insight of what it has been like and yeah. I recommend um, definitely watching it and it sort of just shows you from the very start all the way to our season and 
um, yeah, some really special moments in that. But it has had its challenge challenges, but at the same time, um, there's something special here that we're building. And I know um, next season and, and, and beyond, we're going to be a very exciting, um, you know, exciting team to, to watch. Yeah, you absolutely. Are. And you already are. And uh, the the ladder does not reflect the team that you have at all. And, and you can certainly see um, the connection you girls have. It's it's really awesome to watch and really exciting, like you said, um, to, to see what comes as well. Yeah, thank you. You are in the club's history books. <laughs> You've kicked the first goal. <laughs> And, and during that first game, you did do a, a special, you cel- celebrated with a special gesture. Can you tell us about that moment? Yeah, um, it still probably hasn't really sunk in the, I guess, significance of it, of the first goal ever for a club. Um, uh, but it will be something that I know when I eventually retire and I'll probably look back on and, and it will be played in years to come and I think it will probably hit more home men. Um, but I work in the community team at port so we go out and deliver a program called cyp which is community youth program and um it was the first time that the club had um ran that particular session in an auslan school at south brighton primary there were 22 um either deaf or partially impaired hearing students that we delivered the session to and it was um sort of in auslan and and at the end of the session the kids were teaching us a bit of sign language and I I just mentioned to them like what is go power or go port and they said it's not really like go or port um, but they sort of just showed me that it was a a P and then you put your fist up for power and I just said to them um, you know that the first goal I kick I'll I'll make sure I I do it um, on the TV for you and their eyes lit up and um, yeah obviously that was probably four or five weeks before round one um I I just it, it was special in a way because you know I, I made a promise to the kids and I was always going to deliver it but it was just um special that it was the first ever goal um which in a way I probably didn't think was going to be me because there were a few girls that were lining up um four shots and yeah. unfortunately missed them and it just fell in my lap in front of the goal square and um yeah I didn't even have to think about it I sort of just went back kicked it and and did the celebration, which, um, yeah, it ended up getting back to the kids at the school. And um, I saw a few of the students that came to one of our home games. And, and um, yeah, I, I did it again when I kicked um, another goal in the home game. So, yeah, I think for me it was just, one, keeping my promise to the kids and, two, showing them that, you know, no matter – you know about the the game of sport brings everyone together and it's about inclusion and um, everyone should feel included and they absolutely adore Port Adelaide and I wanted them to feel special and so um, I hope it did did make him feel special and now it's my goal celebration so I always do yeah (laughs) that's brilliant I love that and and you're right it it, sport is inclusive but you know making that even more possible for them is is really special so um props to you so 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 good um tell us about uh, more about your your work out in the community is it is it just with them are are you part of the the aboriginal programs with port adelaide yeah so um a number of programs that that port adelaide run um and, you know, it's it's a huge honour to be a part of them and they do so much in the community and give so much back. So, um, yeah, I'm really proud to call myself a Port Adelaide football player but also work in the community with them. Um, I've been out to um, Alice Springs and, and delivered programs out in the community there when the boys went up to play. Um, there's also the Port Adelaide um sorry, the um, Aboriginal Power Cup, which I wasn't involved with this year because I just missed it when I came over from Perth, but I'll be involved in it next year. Um, They have the Sasta Connect Carnival, which is for Indigenous or those who identify as Indigenous um, or Torres Strait, and they do a football clinic, which is like a mini um, sort of Power Cup version. Uh, I'm going out to Wayala um, as well, which will be another community trip um, the club have gone out to APY lands. It's just there's always something going on yeah. with the club and, and the different programs they run. 
Um, so, yeah, it's been a huge honour to be a part of them. And that's something that I did in Perth, um, involved in a lot of schools and programs and giving back. So to be able to do that here in um, South Australia and, and, and still give back, um, you know, to people is, has been really special in, in my journey over here. Yeah, absolutely. And and tell us about, you, you mentioned briefly that you were a runner. Um, I know you looked up to Kathy Freeman and now there will be lots of young Indigenous girls looking up to you playing playing AFLW. What do you want them to know? Yeah, um, it's, it is a bit weird too because I, I remember, you know, like Kathy Freeman was, she had a huge impact on my life and and I'd never met her before mm-hmm. um I did meet her once when I was younger but um you probably don't realize you know how, how special that was at the time but um I think I just I just look back on the impact she had on my life and she was the reason that I got up and went to training and wanted like I just wanted to be like her and and it mm-hmm. sort of drove me and although I'm not a runner now I'm I'm able to do that but in a, in a better way with football. So um, I guess, you know, the ability to go into schools and actually meet the kids face-to-face and see them playing footy and see them saying, you know, my dream is to one day play like you, you do get taken back in it and you sort of don't really realise the impact you're having on their life. Um, and, yeah, I think it's just it's a huge honour. I, I see it as a privilege. Um, and my message to them is that, you know, no matter what you want to do in life, whether it is footy or whether it is on your own business or get out and, and see the world, you can. And, um, if, if it's just that I'm giving them that bit of hope, um, then I've done my job in a way to, to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Women's sport is, I feel like is finally getting the recognition it deserves. Was there a point in your career where you thought, holy moly, <laughs> there is there is such a huge need and demand for women's sport, whether it be, you know, live or, or watching it on TV? W- was there a moment where that hit you? Yeah, um, probably would have been the first ever women's derby. Uh when I was I was a part of that at Optus Stadium in Perth against West Coast and um I think we played in front of a crowd of of uh thirty two thousand I think it was. Um and the previous year prior to that we'd versed Collingwood there and there was a, a crowd of forty one thousand. Yeah. So I think um you know you just see then that like women have always been a part of sport. We've always played sport and, and if we haven't um necessarily you know being like playing the sport we've been watching it and if you think about AFL in general and the games um you know there's mothers that watch the game there's daughters that watch the game there's aunties and sisters that watch the game and we're a huge part of football and and sport as I've mentioned and I think you know to be able to play at the highest level and and to be told that hey like when you get to a certain age you don't have to stop you can go all the way um I think We've been a part of a huge movement and AFLW, I feel like, has, has really led the way mm. um, in terms of, you know, being able to empower each other and be able to go like, yeah, you can play free and especially, you know, it is a very male-dominant sport. Um, but I think in the six sort of seasons that we've been around, or now seven, um, we've been able to stand and and make a mark and I think our voice has been heard and it will continue to be heard um and you know we're not going anywhere um exactly we're here to stay and the competition (laughs) is only going to grow and get better and bigger absolutely and and you're right it will get bigger and better and already like from 2017 to now there's just been such huge growth in in all the teams and all the, the players the skills um the coverage it just keeps growing and just keeps getting better. And this is super exciting. Yeah. Gemma, what do you want to achieve in your career? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the one thing, and, and this is before I even went to play on um, in, in, in the footy world, but 
even when I was running um, and my basketball, I always told myself I want to look back whenever I retire from sport and be able to say I gave it everything and um, and truly believe that because if I was to retire tomorrow, um, which I'm not going to, but <laughs> <laughs> if I was to say I'm going to retire tomorrow, um, you know, there's probably still so much more I could say I could give. Um, and I just think I want to be able to say, I was the best version of me on the field and off the field. Um, I feel like sport has given me so much and there's so much more I can give back to sport, um, you know, and I think, yeah, I think that's probably what I want to get out of it is just to be able to say that, you know, I did it, I'm proud of myself and and I got, you know, I think I got everything out of it that I that I wanted to um, and and inspire many people along the way to to achieving their dreams and whatever they want to do amazing well I think it's safe to say you've done a pretty amazing <laughs> job so far thank and you. I know you're not retiring tomorrow thank goodness yeah. but what do you see yourself doing after footy what what is your vision because you it's very clear Gemma you are you are made for so much here in what you're doing already and and more afterwards do you have an idea of what that looks like for you yeah I do um I've got a very good manager and he has always really been um pushing me to sort of see life outside of sport um and what I want to do when I finish playing and so my passion has always been young Indigenous youth um and and young athletes and helping them whether it's, you know, it, it, as simple as just saying to them, hey, you know, what do you want to do with your life? If, and then they say whatever it is and just being able to, I guess, you know, give them that belief that they can do it um, because I think about, you know, I look back on the people in my life that helped me get to where I am and um, I want to be someone like that to, to someone along their journey. So I'd love to be involved in sort of a a gap in bridging together I guess the pathway for young Indigenous youth from you know your grassroots footy to your professional level Um, but not I I don't want to focus just on footy because for me there was a whole range of sports there was running basketball Um, so I think I want to open it up to any sort of sport that young kids are doing and and try and um help them along that way yeah Yeah. incredible such awesome work you're already doing um Gemma I know you have to go I I love to finish off these interviews with with something listeners can take away and um, apply to their life as well so what I'd love to know is you know throughout your career what you've learned and experienced um, what can you say to people who, whether they're having, um, you know, challenges throughout their own sport or training or career, um, what advice could you give to them to, to keep going and stay strong? Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes when you're, it's, it's hard because when, when like life happens outside of sport and there are things out of our control that happen, you can sometimes be so caught up in it that you can't see past it. It's almost foggy. And you think in a way that like that defines who you are, whether it's an injury or, you know, you might lose your job or you might be going through something um, that can almost feel like it's heavy and and bigger than life. But one thing I always look back in everything I've been through and, and it's been a journey, like it's, it's not, to you know to get to where I am it hasn't been all bright and shiny you know um I think I've been through probably a lot but everything I've been through I've come out stronger on the other side um and you know I I guess the message I could give to anyone is that no matter what you're going through the tough times um you know they they won't last um but you will and you know that is a saying that I've heard before is um tough times don't last tough people do and I think um sometimes your only option um of you know that you've got is to be strong and I think you know if you if you just push through sometimes it takes like almost 
a, a physical push through. Like you actually sometimes feel like you're breaking down barriers and walls of whatever's going on in life, but you'll always come out stronger, always. Brilliant. You're awesome, Gemma. Thank you so much for your time today and all the best for the weekend. That's all right. Thank you so much, Jackie. That was Gemma Houghton. had an absolute blast chatting with her and I could have spoken with her (laughs) for hours on end. If you want to check out the inaugurals, the documentary that she mentioned, I will have it in the show notes. So the link is there. So check it out. Whether you're a Port Adelaide fan or not, it is such an awesome documentary. It showcases the the journey from what it's like and, and what, it, what the experience of bringing a team together um, for the first time and not just the, the team of players, but the entire um, women's team from coaches and staff. So it's an incredible documentary. Check it out. Make sure you head over to Gemma's Instagram and give her a follow there. And also the Women's Port Adelaide Football Club Insta as well and follow them and support women's sport because we're doing big things and the future is bright. If you loved this episode, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel because that all helps this show grow and of course get to the people just like you who have enjoyed listening to this episode thank you so much for your time once again i appreciate you and you tuning into this show today have the best day stay awesome and i'll catch you next time